Instead, of, before you can thrive, you got to survive. But we're from beyond surviving, so I need you to thrive. Amen. So, um, so we need one another to go where God has destined us to go. John, I'm going to read the first six verses of uh, Third John. I'm reading King James Version this morning. The elder unto the beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sword, thou, wilt, thou shalt do well. Let me go back to the first, uh, second verse, because that is our verse for the month and the verse for the year. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper it. Let's say amen to the reading and hearing of God's word. Amen. This is a wonderful text. This is one of the latter letters written from the longest living apostle and pretty much eyewitness to Christ. Written 80 AD, 89 AD, they, they say that time frame. But we're, here is John the Apostle, John the Beloved, John the Revelator, writing here to Gaius, which we'll talk about here in a second. And what's so remarkable is that we, we, we're getting word, we're getting a letter from uh, one of the apostles, Older in age, not far from his years of passing, but writing something that um, really speaks and resonates in my spirit about what God wants to do with us this year. And the, the theme, I want to set the theme for this year, the focus that the Lord has downloaded for me, most of you already know. But God has spoken to me and said, for us, for you, for we this is the year of advancement from the inside out. I want to spend this month talking about that. Talking about what does God mean about this being the year of advancement from the inside out. Who doesn't like being advanced at something? Right or wrong? You have, even in school, they have what you call regular classes, targeted classes, which are help classes, and then they have advanced classes. That means that you were, it's a little more rigorous or you have to qualify or it's a little more than what you would have as the norm. All right? Even advances. How many like to get an advance when you get hired on a job when they say, you know what, we're going to give you an advance? Amen. We call that bonus, right? How many like to advance in their finances Amen. or advance in your promotion, advance in your family, advance in your relationships? And so God is saying that this is going to be a year of advancement. But the key to the advancement is that it happens from the inside out. In other words, there's direct proportion of your advancement to what is taking place on the inside of a man. And here we have John the apostle writing to Gaius and he's telling him, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as or in direct relations, relation to your soul prospering. In other words, he writes and says that as your soul, which he's obviously confident that God's soul is going to prosper, and we'll talk about that here in a second, but as your soul is prospering, I would that you prosper and be in health. And so breaking down this word prosper, this word prosper is, or prosper is used four times in the New Testament is used multiple times in the Old Testament. 
But the use of it in the New Testament is uh, amazed me on how they compound. It's actually a compound word. It comes from uh, from the point of having a journey, going on a journey, a root word of going on a journey or walking to a place and it, in connection to having success. So he's telling them that I would, as you go on your journey, be successful. And so prospering here means to actually go to a place or on your way of walking down that path, you are going to reach success, which another translation of that success, common theme throughout the Bible is advancement. In other words, he's wishing that he advance as his soul advances. Y'all get that here in a second. And so what he's telling Gaius is that I want you to advance. I want you to move forward. I want progress movement in your life in direct proportion to the inner man. And he's telling him this because he looked at the reality of who Gaius is and the reports that came from him. In the following verses, he says things like, well, I know that the truth is in you and you walk by the truth. And that's why I'm so joyous to find out that my children are walking in truth. And I know that you're walking in truth because there are evidences, there are testimonies, there are reports that you are demonstrating that which is inside of you. And because of that which is inside of you, the change and the growth that is happening, I am hoping and I'm praying and I'm seeking and I'm believing that as you continue to prosper, in other words, go on your journey of success, that your, your life on the outside would be prosperous, which means I would want you to be well in your business affairs. I would want you to be well in your home. I want your family to be well. I want not only well, but I want them to advance. I want them to progress. I want you to move forward because I have inspected and I have concluded that something on the inside of you is moving forward, which has been demonstrated in a way that we can see that you are changing from the inside out. Thank you, Jesus. He says, my children, and what he means by children, obviously, those that are brought into this way. In other words, John discipled Gaius. He was a part of his initial birth into the body of Christ. And he said, I take much joy when I see somebody that I fathered and somebody I invested into and I spent time with and I see them in the truth and it dwells inside of them and they're walking in truth and they're living that truth and it's being demonstrated to people they know. And he said, here's the other part, and to strangers. Apostle John is writing this letter to Gaius from the elder, from the senior leader to Gaius, who is not a whole bunch mentioned about Gaius in the Bible, but he must have been doing something significant for the apostle to take his time and write a letter to him. And at the end of this, it talks about, I got so much I want to tell you and I want to talk to you about Gaius, but I'll do it when I see you face to face John was expecting and was looking forward to seeing Gaius because he was one that had demonstrated everything he was teaching and everything he had poured into him and everything he had believed for him he was demonstrating that and so the wonderful thing about this is we get an inside look an inside view of what is literally happening in this time frame between these two individuals and then God has given us an opportunity to see the revelation of what happens when you understand how to get it right in the Lord. And this year is a year about understanding if I want any movement in my family's life, if I want any movement in my work life, if I want any movement in my mental stability and my health and all these different areas that are essential and important to my life, if I want movement, I have to understand how the movement essentially and most importantly happens. And it happens one way, from the inside out. Belief is everything. <clears throat> what you believe is what you act upon, and what you act upon is what you become. But belief is based upon whatever is your truth. 
and the challenge we may have sometimes is that either A, we got a wrong truth in us, which we have perception in, in other words, is what I'm saying, versus listening to the truth that should be in us, which is what Gaius did. He listened to the truth and what, what the apostle was referring to was the word of God. And everything that was taught unto him that was given by Jesus himself. What's so wonderful about this is that we're not dealing with somebody that's a second or third generation disciple. We're dealing with somebody that woke with Jesus himself. We're dealing with the beloved disciple that's talked about in John that wrote John. The one that started off and said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. We're talking about this apostle writing to guys. We're talking about the one that wrote about revelations that he wanted to write a book that for the saints it would give them hope. Most of y'all are scared of Revelations. But if you were a believer back then, Revelations would have gave you the peace and joy of understanding the hell that I'm going through. We win in the end. So for them, it was a great book. It revealed the truth of what God was going to do for them in spite of where they were. This is the man we're talking about that has wrote to Gaius. And he's telling them, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that the truth is in you. I'm so happy that you're walking in the truth. I'm so happy that you are not ignoring what God has said and what God has spoken. I'm so happy that you're not doing what business as usual and doing what everybody else is doing at Jehovah's Trophies. Um, we're just talking about at the end, I'm, you're doing what you want to do with the church. We're going to talk about that in a couple weeks. Uh, but, you're, but you are a good steward of what God has given you in every facet of your life. And God has really done something on the inside of you that is being demonstrated on the outside. In other words, he said, I, because I see this, I so desperately want you to advance. I so desperately want you to prosper and be of good health. So there are going to be four things that we're going to talk about that the inside man advances. Four areas that your inside man directly impact, impacts and influences. Everybody say health. Everybody say wealth. Everybody say family. Everyone say legacy. We're going to, this, this month, we're going to deal with these areas of understanding the advancing that need that you desire to take place. In these four areas, you can pretty much wrap, wrap up, up everything about what you desire and what you want to be. When you think about health, we're talking not only physical, but we're talking mentally. All these are birthed and they're influenced by the inside man. The basis of all of these advancing is based upon who you are on the inside. In other words, I'm dealing with who the spiritual man is. There is only so much you can accomplish in your natural man that lasts long term. But if you want, in order to have health, health truly, if done from a spiritual standpoint, is something that is not temporary, but it's long lasting and it influences and it impacts other areas. If you only think from a natural standpoint, when you work out, that only benefits you. Nothing wrong with it, but it only benefits you. But true health from the inside out benefits and impacts not only you, but it can make that instrument that is helping you help others. I'm going to get there. Thank you, Jesus. Wealth. Wealth is so many different. Wealth and health is somewhat tied together. Because when we think about wealth, the first thing we think about is money. And yes, there is something we need to talk about is money, but here's the reality. Money and wealth and all those things that are accumulated, whether good or bad, are accumulated from the inside. But some people's wealth are not wealth, they're riches, which means it's only monetary. And once that, that is gone, they have nothing and they can't take it with them from an eternal standpoint. But a wealth person understands that what they do on the inside is going to transform not only themselves, but it's going to impact their children and their children's children. It's going to impact their family. It's going to impact their loved ones. So we're going to talk about understanding what really wealth is from the inside out. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to talk about what it means from the inside out when we say family. What we mean by immediate, extended, and, 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 and so on, and 
how important who you are on the inside, how that really impacts what happens to those that are around you. In the Bible, one of the saddest things about the Bible that it, in reading it is that every king, just about every king, failed as a father. Great kings, from Josiah to Hezekiah to Asa to, of course, David, Saul, these guys failed as fathers. How do you know? Because the next generation, one king would serve God and the one right after them would run away from God. Which tells us that there was something not being transferred down. Maybe they were too busy with running the kingdom that they neglected the family. Maybe they were so ambitious about accomplishing the affairs of the kingdom that they forgot about their first Thing that they needed to work on. Maybe they forgot about the inside of the home and was working on the outside things more than the inside. And even in this time frame, we see a trend of yet fathers failing over and over again, their children and their wives and their family, because obviously there's something on the inside that is not needed, necessary to get them to where they want to go, but they need what is on the inside to be there and is not there, and that's Christ Jesus in a way where they respond to that truth. Because here's the thing, I'm not talking about just unbelievers, that would be one thing, but when there are believing men failing their family, that means there's something there that there needs to be moved and out the way so that the truth can really come forward. Or B, we're ignoring that truth. Which makes God is so incredible that he was a man that walked after the truth. Not just the truth that I've been saved and I'm delivered, I'm set free and I'm going to heaven, but the truth that I'm supposed to leave a legacy. The truth that I'm supposed to operate and impact my family, whether it be my immediate family, or my church family, or those strangers. The truth that I'm supposed to develop health and wealth, which he demonstrated that. He, because he tells, John tells him to please help support and take them on. You can only ask the person to help support if they have the capacity and ability to support. And so in Gaius, you see a man that is well-rounded in every aspect that God is wanting us to be as believers. And here is a great opportunity this year for us to start advancing in some areas that maybe we are not where we want to be. Maybe you are not where you want to be health-wise. Maybe you're not where you want to be wealth-wise. Maybe you're not where you want to be family-wise. Maybe you're not where you want to be legacy-wise. Maybe you're not in alignment with what you want to be known for if, when you die. Or maybe if you died right now, this is not the story you want to be said. You don't want them to say, well, he was a good person, but they cannot tell specifically what you did in this life. Whatever it may be, I want you to gather that. I want you to contemplate this month. I want you to think about whatever it is on the inside of you. I want you to really get that together and begin to be truthful according to the truth of the word of God. And when you are truthful to according to the truth of God, you'll begin to see yourself advance because that means the inside man is really wrestling with himself to get to a place to where he says, which I said earlier, a yes, Lord. And when you have that on the inside, you can begin to experiencing God moving and opening up doors and God shifting things. And let me tell you something. It's not an overnight process. That's why I said the year of advancement. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be 100% where you want to be in every area of your life. But you ought to be better the last Sunday of this year than you are right now this Sunday. You ought to be moving forward on your journey. In other words, in direct relation to what happens to your soul this year, it's going to determine things for your family. It's going to determine things on your job. It's going to, see, you, it's going to determine so much how serious you are about that inner man, Amen. about that man that's going to live forever, about the identity and influence and, and, and the impact of that inner man. And you have to be real about where you are and where you aren't. It's okay if you're not where you want to be. It's not okay to do nothing about it. It's okay if you got struggles. It's not okay if you're giving up and let those struggles overcome you. 
It's okay if you've made mistakes, but it's not okay if you haven't learned from those mistakes. If you're still walking in those mistakes. It's okay if when you look in the mirror, you might not see Christ the way you want to. But it's very, very bad that you're not trying to adjust that mirror. It's okay if you've hurt some people or hurt, done some hurtful things. But it's not okay for you to walk around guilty instead of understanding God gives forgiveness and he gives deliverance and he gives healing and, and he still thinks of you being significant. It amazes me how many people feel like they can't even pray to God because they felt they've done something so bad or they felt like their relationship is fractured with God in a certain way because of what they may have done. But that is something that God literally gets offended by. When you try to tell God, I'm unforgivable. When you try to tell God, I'm unworkable. When you try to tell God, I'm unfixable. God gets offended because you are trying, in other words, in your humbleness, you're trying to be uh, have humility. You are trying to tell God how what kind of ability he has. You're trying to tell God what he can't do. You're trying to tell God that his love is limited and only those that, that make only two mistakes in their life does God love as much as those that... Oh, y'all get that in a second. But, it, but remember, there's a, there's a parable that said uh, which one of them had more forgiveness. One was talking about, well, you know, I did this and I did that. He was talking all loud. But one, he just panted his heart and said, Lord, forgive me. Which one had more forgiveness. The one that just said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes. Lord, forgive me. I understand why I am. I understand my situation. Lord, just forgive me and put me back in right place. There's something about the power of the prodigal son that he came home and he said, I've sinned against heaven. Notice the text. It says, I've sinned against heaven. He was referring to I sinned against God. But the natural father had enough God in him woo, to say that my son has returned. My son is back and we're going to celebrate the one that was lost because now he is what? Found. Thank you, Jesus. If you're going to advance, you've got to get some junk out of you. Some misconceptions and some perceptions and some belief system. You've got to get that junk out of you because it's stopping you from going forward. It's mess so you so messy that you cannot see. You can't even when something is clean. You so messy that you can't even recognize clean when you see it. You can't recognize you're delivered when you are. You can't recognize that you're royalty when you are. You cannot recognize your victory when it's there. You cannot recognize your joy in the middle of the the storm that you're going through because you're so messed up. You allow trauma and drama and mamas to mess you up. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't allow so many things to stop you from being who God is declaring you to be. Thank you, Jesus. And all I'm saying is that this is a year of advancement. We're moving forward. Somebody say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Somebody say, you moving forward. <laughs> Tell somebody else, we moving forward. We moving forward. Thank you, Jesus. This is an opportunity. If you really believe that, begin to give God some praise. In the name of Jesus, we're moving forward. We're moving forward. We are advancing from the inside out. We are going forward. It might get tough. Nobody said advancement was easy, but we said it's worth it. It's worth advancing. My family's worth advancing. My home is worth advancing. My life is worth advancing. My church family is worth advancing. My, my desires and my passions and my purpose it's all worth me advancing this year. I might not have advanced in 2014, but I got a year. Oh, I got a new year to advance. And I got a new year to take my swing again. I have not struck out. Oh my goodness, y'all get this in a second. Hey, I have not been counted out for the count. The game is not over. Hey, thank you, Jesus. There's still time on the clock. For me to advance, for me to succeed on my journey, somebody give God some praise. Let us stand.